Okay, let's get some more. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you something. Let's get um I want one second. I want Joshua. We're gonna go to Joshua chapter 19 and verse 7. This is Joshua chapter 19 and verse 7. Joshua 19 and verse 7. Because remember, I told you when we ran deeper south into Africa, we there's something in there's something that we started to do that was prophesied to happen, but God told us, look, avoid this. What we did was we started to mingle amongst the heathen. We started to mingle amongst the other, the ancient Hermetic tribes over there in Africa. And we learned their ways. But before we get Joshua, let's get Psalms. Let's get the book of Psalms. Uh, okay, Psalms 106, and we want verse 34. It says, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works, right? And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. So when we migrated deeper south into the continent of Africa, we started to mingle amongst the other ancient Hermetic communities and we learned their ways. We learned their ways. So through a process of time, a majority of our Israelite customs was lost. Although remnants of us kept small parts of the law, like for example, circumcision. I know in the, uh, the, um, the Ashanti tribe, the Ga tribe of Ghana, a lot of them still practice circumcision. Um, the separation of her wife, of their wives when they're unclean. Um, the new moon and certain high holy days, although y'all change the name, like you have something called the Yam Festival, which is similar to first fruits, I believe. However, God never gave you something called the Yam Festival. Okay, he calls it Feast of Pentecost or Feast of First Fruits. So this is what happened when we started to mingle amongst the nations. But we kept the, the certain small things that we kept. For example, the name Ashan, where did that come from? We're going to get Joshua 19 and verse 7. First, let's start at verse 1. Joshua 19, verse 1, so we could keep it in context for you context, brothers and sisters out there. Joshua chapter 19, verse 1. And the second lot came forth to Simeon, even for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. Now, when you jump down to verse 7, it says Ain, R R Ain, Raman, and Ether, and Ashan, four cities and their villages. So you had our brothers and sisters, tribes within the tribe of Judah and so forth, that were called Ashan. This, these were the names that they had, Ashan. The word Ashan means smoke. When you add the T-I at the end, T, it means people of. So people of the smoke. That's what they named themselves when they migrated deeper south into Africa, where they set up the kingdom of Ashanti, also known as the kingdom of Judah. Others set up the, the Songhai Empire. You had the Baluba Jews of Congo, right? You had the um, Buganda kingdom, which later um, turned into Uganda, Okay. So why did they name themselves people of the smoke? Because they know what Christ prophesied in um, Luke, the 21st chapter, the besiegement of Jerusalem, when the Romans came in and, and, and burnt up um, Jerusalem. OK, that's why the Ashanti, when you do the research, that's why the Ashanti call themselves the people of the smoke. OK, so we migrated into Africa, right? Remnants of us. Mingled amongst the heathen, we lost our ways. 
Jeremiah 17, verse 4. So through a process of time, guess what? When you start to keep the customs of the heathens or the other nations, you yourself become a heathen. You yourself get um, beget the, the mentality of a Gentile, okay? That's why Christ told us to do what? To bethink ourselves in the land of our captivity. We're going to get Jeremiah 17. I want Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. Okay. It says, one second, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. But ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So this is what happened when we started to mingle amongst the other Hermetic tribes on the continent of Africa. We learned their works and we followed their ways. That was the remnant of us. What happened to the bulk of us? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Okay, so remember, process of elimination. Ask yourself, while we're going over this, do the people in Israel fit these curses? No. Did they migrate deeper south into Africa? No. It was in the, in the caves of um, Georgia, Russia. Okay, as Khazars, Khazars. That's exactly who they were. All right, those false Jews. Okay. Those weren't the people that were um, besieged in um, Jerusalem, okay? It was our people, okay? Even the ones that converted, the ones that converted um, to Judaism, for the lack of better words, right? And took on Israelite customs, right? Under John Hycranus and so forth. Guess what? They, those people ended up blending in with the Roman population. They wasn't taken and sent on cargo slave ships. We're going to read about it. So what happened to the bulk of the real Jews? Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What is that Egypt? Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Where do we read that at? Exodus. We're going to go to the book of Exodus, chapter. 20 and verse 2. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage, slavery. So when you go back to Deuteronomy 28 verse 68, it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, with ships. Let me repeat that again, with ships. So the, the, when we was over there in Africa scattered, when, when the prophecy had to fulfill itself, right? Around the time of the, the, um, 1600s, early 1600s, right? A majority was taken from the shores of Africa on ships and brought to where? Places like America, Mississippi, Georgia, New York, Texas, Alabama, Jamaica, Haiti, Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Croix, St. John, St. Vincent, Dominican Republic. Those were our people that was taken as slaves from the continent of Africa brought over. Nowhere in any history books do you read about Caucasians, so-called Amalek, white Hebrew, Isra white Hebrew Israelis going into slavery on ships. They don't fit these prophecies, man. God told you that he is a man. He shall lie not. His word doesn't go out void. You would have to literally open up our constitution and show us where does it say that Europeans would go into slavery on ship. Show me where it says Esau would be taken on ships and sold to their enemies. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses said it was going to happen, it happened. Why? Because Moses was speaking with the word of God. All right? It says, um, 
thou shalt see it no more again. So we're not going to see our homeland Israel again as a nation of people. Because remember, when Moses wrote Deuteronomy, they were headed where? They were headed into the promised land. So he's saying you're not going to see your homeland again. Okay? And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. It says there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Who was buying us during the time of slavery? Who was buying us in the time of slavery? So-called white people. So-called white people. All the other nations, not even just Esau, but all the other nations was buying us. God is telling us we were sold unto our enemies. Now, when you look at the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, were they sold unto their enemies? No, they were not sold unto their enemies. So what are they talking about? Lies, lies. Okay, that's why God told, that's why Christ told us in Revelation 2 verse 9, I know the blasphemy, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But they are the synagogue of Satan. Everything that comes out of the mouth of these people are lies, brothers and sisters. Okay? It says, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen. That's black people being sold as slave men, bondmen, and bondwomen. The black woman was sold along with us. And no man shall buy you. So that's one of the curses that befell the Israelites that was on the continent of Africa. We was taken and sold into slavery. Now, when you read verse 15, this was the stipulation. It says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments, as which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So mind you, Moses is speaking to black people. Remember, they just left Egypt on, they on their way to the land of Israel, which at that time was the land of Canaan, right? We was on our way to the land of Israel. Moses said, look, if you keep God's laws, you're going to be blessed. If you break God's laws, you're going to get a curse upon you. And of course, the Bible's reoccurring. The Israelites was always breaking God's laws. We are a hard-headed people. So we broke God's laws, and this is what happened. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Whose sons and daughters was given to another people? I'm waiting. All I hear is crickets. You know why you don't you not you, you don't know the answer or you're struggling? Because brainwashing, Christianity. Okay? When you look at the so-called Jews over there in the land, right? Our white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, those people will never ever when what period of time would their people, their sons and daughters, right? Give um, taken from them and given to another people. Some of you might jump up and say, the Holocaust. Well, the Holocaust was not slavery because we just read ships. They weren't taken on ships, right? Now in that same verse, God says, you shall have no might in your hand. You didn't have any might to recover your children back. But when you observe the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, they had power to redeem their children. Till this day, they still have Mossad agents hunting down former SSI soldiers, former German um, Nazi um, soldiers who had their forefathers in captivities. Why? Because the might is in their hand. Job, nine, Job chapter nine, verse 24 says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. For the earth to be given into the hand of the wicked, what must you have? Power, power. Power. So they have the military might, they have the economic might, 
and they have the backing of these United Snakes of America to hunt down their enemies. We don't have that power to hunt down our enemies, okay? It says, um, I'm gonna read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. This did not happen to the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites, brothers and sisters. It happened to our people. It's time for you to wake up and smell the scriptures. Wake up and smell the scriptures. Take your head out of the white man's ass. Take And that word ass is in the Bible, so don't get offended. Take your head out of the white man's ass. Take your head out of the British man's ass and smell the scriptures. Wake up and keep the commandments. Stop worshiping a, a white God, okay? Oh, known as Cesar Borgia. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Verse 33. It says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. It says, the fruit of thy land. What is the fruit of your land? Brothers and sisters in Ghana, brothers and sisters scattered throughout the continent of Africa, the fruit of your land are your resources, right? Your bauxite, your silver, your gold, your yam, right? It's going, it's going into more than just crops. It's going into the resources of your land, your oil, your gold. In particular, Ghana was once called the Gold Coast. Where's your gold? Where is your gold? It's in the British Museum. That's exactly where your gold is. It's no longer, no longer do people look at Ghana as the Gold Coast. They look at it as the Dust Coast, because that's all you got. The British man came there. He robbed all of your gold. Remember back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when the Ashanti kingdom was fighting against Britain, an Edomite empire. What happened? Remember that golden stool that you had, the Ashanti kingdom, that golden stool that you had that many of your kings would uh, possess? What happened to that? Did not Britain come and destroy that and take it away with them. They took many of your artifacts, many of your relics. They took, they took your gold. Okay. Did that happen to the white Hebrew Israeli Amalekites? No, it did not happen to them. They had the might to fight off um, Hezbollah, as they say, Hezbollah. Okay or the, the, the Arabs that are that are rising up against them because they colonized that land from the Palestinian, but that land don't belong to neither one of them, all right? But that's another story, okay? They have the might to fight against their enemies. Where's your might? Britain can come this very day and recolonize Ghana. What would you do? Nothing. You would have, you would, there would be nothing you can do about it. If America wanted to come this very day and colonize Ghana, he would be able to do it like that. If China um, Ghana, he would be able to do it like that. If Russia wanted to come and colonize Africa, Ghana, he would be able to do it like that. You are the people of the book. You are the oppressed you are the forgotten, you are the slain, you are the tormented, you are the afflicted. God is talking about you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.